In a previous episode, we've seen how to make a voltage controlled oscillator that generates a good triangular waveform. But today we will need some personal protection equipment because we will try to smooth out those pesky sharp pinnacles and shape them into a sine wave. Wave shaping a triangular waveform into a sine wave is a well known old technique that was used, for example, in the model. 3311A, a function generator made by Hewlett Packard in 1973. Uh, that uh, circuit is pretty simple because it is made with a chain of uh, silicon diodes uh, followed by a series of uh, uh, germanium diodes. What? How this wave shaper works? Basically, it exploits the nonlinear characteristic of diodes. As you will know, the current flows through uh, the diodes in only one direction, but this doesn't happen abruptly starting from zero volt. It requires, it requires uh, some voltage uh, to overcome the junction's uh, voltage drop. Uh, typically it is 0.7 volt for silicon diodes. And the relation between current, uh, current and voltage is more or less uh, like this curve here. So the idea is essentially to connect a resistor and a diode in series and uh, fit this series with uh, the ramp coming from the, the um, triangular waveform. And um, so when the voltage approaches its maximum, um, the, the diode will start to conduct more and more, making the resistor to drop uh, a voltage and uh, in turn uh, making the, the, the tip of the triangle to be clipped out. Let's see this in practice. Here we have uh, the um, oscillator that uh, we have seen in the previous episode that generates the triangular waveform that comes to is an amplifier and a potentiometer that uh, allows to adjust the amplitude of the, of the signal and the output of the amplifier goes to uh, this uh, series. Uh, we, here we have a resistor in series with the diode and, uh, and here a probe uh, reads uh, the, the signal coming from the amplifier and, and the triangle of waveform and another probe uh, is it connected here to the cathode of the diode, of the diode uh, in, in parallel to the, the diode to, to read the voltage across the diode. So let's see the voltage across the diode at the oscilloscope. The yellow trace is the signal coming from the yellow trace is the signal coming from the the generator and the pink trace is the signal across the diode. As you can see that the signal at the beginning is uh, as the same as the triangular waveform, but as the amplitude increase, you can see here the voltage uh, the, this the the signal is clipped here, and uh, let's reduce the. As you can see here, the voltage, the, the signal is completely uh, clipped out. So now let's see in X Y mode, and um, this is the characteristic of the diode. We have the. On this axis, we have uh, one probe the original signal, the triangular waveform, and on this axis we have the voltage across the diode. So we can see it bends when the diode goes in conduction. The problem with this simple solution is that the diode's characteristic cannot overlap very well with the curve of a sine wave. Let me show this a little better. This is a sine wave and from this I extract uh, just a quarter of sine wave, the section where the sun grows up to reach the peak. And uh, uh, I if I overlap this curve with the forward conducting characteristic of a, silicon, of a silicon diode, we can see the two doesn't match that well. So to avoid this problem, here Packard is a further string of diodes, this time germanium diodes. Because the germanium diodes uh, have uh, a smoother curve and start conducting at a lower voltage than silicon diodes, uh, they soften up the waveform after the silicon diode has clipped it. 
Germanium diodes are hard to get nowadays, yes. Uh, so, to make my own uh, wave shaper, I tried a slightly different path. My circuit uses an operation amplifier as a buffer and a shaper, and I used a couple of silicon diodes here uh, to smooth out the, the triangle waveform and uh, a couple of, uh, of LEDs to, uh, to give a negative feedback uh, for the operation amplifier. And, um, and this uh, is to clip the very tip of the triangle waveform. And uh, these two potentiometers are used to adjust the right amount of voltage uh, across these diodes uh, to get uh, the, 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 the correct waveform and the output. To so the same series of uh, resistor and diode uh, seen before, now I add um, a an LED uh, with a cathode that is in the opposite side in respect to the cathode of this uh, LED. In this case, the, uh, the waveform is clipped uh, at both negative and at uh, the positive. Uh, uh, at positive, of course, the, the positive is higher than negative because here we have the diode, which is 0.7 volt, about 0.6 volt, and here uh, we have the LED that is around uh, 1.8 uh, volt, 1.7 volt. So let's see in XY mode, so we can check this and uh, we can see here uh, the, this is the diode, the curve of the diode and this is the curve of the, of the LED. Please don't care this little double trace because this is caused by um, the capacitance, so the parasitic capacitance of the breadboard. So expand this a little bit, so the knee also the knee is different. This is this I have this is a steeper knee and a steeper um, curve than the diode. And remember this is the this will be the negative feedback of the operation amplifier. And here we go. This is the region of the circuit uh, that uh, uh, has uh, the shaper that makes the shaper. This is the operation amplifier, the half operation amplifier is used as a shaper. These are the two diodes, so the two LED, sorry, these are the two LEDs, uh, the feedback uh, uh, control resistors and potentiometer, uh, the two diodes and the uh, potentiometer to adjust the, the, in the shape of the input of the, of the operation amplifier. Tweaking the two potentiometers, uh, and the output waveform can be adjusted to get the best sine wave. An excess lead to an almost square wave, while too little does not suppress enough the tips of the triangle. It requires a fine balance to reach the optimal waveform, and checking it with the FFT helps to achieve the lowest distortion. And this is the, the signal, this is the yellow trace is of course the uh, triangular waveform that comes from the in, that is um, presented to the input of the wave shaper and the pink uh, waveform is the sine wave uh, in output of the shape of the wave, wave shaper and you will notice that uh, the, the two are uh, in opposite phase because of course the circuit is an inverting operation amplifier this solution is far to be perfect, but it provides a decent sine wave uh, that is not affected by the frequency, and it is achieved with a very simple circuit. Uh, with this circuit, uh, I used the FFT analysis and I calculated um, about 1.3% uh, of distortion uh, over the full range of frequencies, uh, which is uh, not that brilliant. It is acceptable but not that brilliant uh, but adding a ladder of diodes or swapping the diodes with uh, uh, from silicon to germanium diodes uh, yes <laughs> uh, would uh, let to achieve uh, even better lower distortion one important point to note with this circuit uh, is that the output, uh, the waveform, sh the shaped waveform in output depends by the amplitude of the triangular signal in input. So, uh, to avoid excessive distortion due to variation in amplitude, 
a photo circuit is inserted between the output of the oscillator and the input of the shaper of the wave shaper and this circuit is an automatic gain control and this is also useful to have a stable uh, triangular, triangular waveform in output but uh, we will see this circuit in the next episode so don't forget to subscribe and uh, click the bell icon and <laughs> If you liked this video and that's all folks thanks for watching see you next time bye